Hi, I'm Meg from the Northeast Risk Network. Today, I'm going to introduce the New England Landscape Futures, or NELF Explorer, that was developed by Harvard Forest of Harvard University. The NELF Explorer is a web tool that allows us to look at the land cover changes associated with five scenarios of future land use in New England, modeled from 2010 to 2060. One of the five scenarios represents a linear continuation of recent trends in land use, which includes land cover change and timber harvesting. The other four scenarios are divergent alternative scenarios that were co-designed by more than 150 stakeholders from around the region, including conservationists, planners, resource managers, landowners, and scientists. The qualitative scenarios that were articulated by these stakeholders were then translated into changes to recent trends rates in land cover change and then simulated using a spatially explicit land cover change model. The results from these models are what we can explore in the NELF Explorer tool. So let's take a look. When you first visit newenglandlandscapes.org, you are greeted by this page, where you can choose to complete a choose your own destiny style activity that will take you to a specific scenario based on a few quick selections of what type of future you would like to explore. Second, you can click tell me a story to visit a story map that walks you through the details of the New England Landscape Futures project, including each of the scenarios. This is a great place to start if you want more information on why the scenarios look so different when we go to the maps. Finally, you can skip right to the maps, which is where we'll go. Now, let's take a quick tour of the Explorer. When we first get to the Explorer tool, the first thing you may notice is that we are centered on New England, and we are viewing two different land cover maps. The legend for the maps is up here in the right corner with two different types of development in red, forests in green, agriculture in yellow, other in gray, and finally water in blue. The two maps are separated by this little slider and we can see which two maps are displayed in these bottom gray boxes. For instance, if I slide my slider all the way to the right, I am viewing just the starting conditions or 2010 land cover map for the recent trends scenario. If I move my slider all the way to the left, I'm viewing the 2060 or final land cover map for the connected communities scenario. I can change the year of the land cover map output from the simulation using the slider at the bottom under connected communities. For example, I could compare the starting conditions or 2010 from recent trends with the 2030 from connected communities. You'll notice that if I switch the connected communities map to 2010, the maps look exactly the same. That's because the starting conditions for each of the simulations were the same. But what happens if I change both to 2060? Now I am comparing the final year of the simulations for both scenarios. I can see how changes in land use articulated in the connected community scenario altered the resulting land covers as compared to a continuation of recent trends in land use. Now that you're familiar with the layout of the Explorer, let's switch up the scenarios we are viewing. For a quick introduction to each of the scenarios that you saw on my beginning slides, you can also check out the About Future Scenarios tab at the top left. We were just comparing the connected community scenario with the recent trends scenario. The recent trend scenario is just a continuation of the current trends in land use, where by 2060, approximately 4% of our forests are lost to development, primarily due to sprawling low density development, which may in turn increase introduction pathways for invasive species. It is often useful to have recent trends as one of the visible scenarios so that you can compare other scenarios to the continuation of recent trends in land use. So, Let's pick another of the stakeholder-defined scenarios to look at with recent trends. 
Pictured over here on the left is how each of these scenarios was defined. Stakeholders first defined two axes of change that they felt were going to be the most influential on land use and most uncertain in the next 50 years. Those two axes were natural resource planning and innovation from low to high and socioeconomic connectedness from local to global. Connected communities sits up here in the upper left quadrant where stakeholders envisioned a future with high natural resource planning and innovation, like transitioning away from fossil fuels and low socioeconomic connectedness. So resources needed to be sourced from nearby and immigration to the area was low. However, if we look at the scenario on the opposite side of the axes, growing global, this scenario had low natural resource planning and innovation and global socioeconomic connectedness. In this scenario, the global socioeconomic connectedness meant that there was a high influx of climate migrants with little natural resource planning. Therefore, there was rapid and relatively unplanned development and little transition away from fossil fuels. Let's take a look at what that looks like spatially. To change the scenario you would like to view in the Explorer, you click the Change Scenarios tab along the top. I'm going to leave the left scenario as recent trends since it is helpful for putting the other scenarios in context. And I will change the right scenario from connected communities to growing global. So now I'm viewing your 2060 of recent trends on the left and 2060 of growing global on the right. As I scroll across all of New England, you can see some major differences in development patterns, especially emanating from the Boston area. We can explore these differences in more detail using the Explore Areas tab. Here, we can choose different regions for viewing statistics about the land cover changes modeled by each of the scenarios. For now, I will choose to look at some statistics by county. In the growing global scenario, there have been some major changes in land use for Rockingham County in New Hampshire. So let's look at that county. If I click on that county, the NELF Explorer will populate this bottom window with graphs of land cover over time for each of the displayed scenarios. In the graphs on the left, we can see that the proportion of each land cover type in Rockingham County is the same for both scenarios in 2010. But by 2060, all of the unprotected forested area was covered with development in the growing global scenario. In the same window on the right, we can look at how land cover has changed within certain important designations, such as flood zones. For growing global, Conserved forest has decreased by nearly half in flood zones, and there is over five times more development in these same areas. This change in land cover is likely to impact the county's resilience to floods, which are predicted to become increasingly problematic with climate change. We can look at these statistics for different designations, such as wildlife habitats or priority conservation areas using this drop-down menu. Feel free to explore more of each of these choices and explore options on your own, as there are many different combinations to try, and the different scenarios can tell you more about how unique combinations of land use choices can impact land cover in different areas. Thanks so much for watching this introductory video on the New England Landscape Futures Explorer from the Northeast Risk Network. I hope you found it useful and try some of the features on your own. If you would like more information on either the Risk Network or the NELF project, you can visit the NELF website at newenglandlandscapes.org and the Risk website at risknetwork.org. Thanks again, and stay tuned for more videos like this one.